Get in here, get in here, get in here, best friend. Come in here right now. Okay, girls, all right? I'm coming out here to sit so we can have a conversation about your feminine power. Okay, that is the power that you have to get everything that you want. And some of y'all aren't using it. You're letting these masculine energy folks. And when I talk about masculine energy, I'm not just talking about men. Masculine energy can be men. It can be women. Let me take this off so you can see me. All right? It can be any of them. Let me put this back in my ear. Okay? You're not using your feminine power the right way, honey. And you have power. You have power. Come in here and click I can share. We're going to have a conversation. Treme Gordon, Michelle Ranger, who gave me some stars. Yes, click like and share. Let me know you shared it, darling. Do you all love this? I wore this in my video the other day. I said, until I get a million views in this thing, you're going to keep on seeing it. That's how I do my outfits. I discontinue the outfit after I've gotten a million views. And so then, honey, it's not time to discontinue it. All right, I'm out here on my patio. Skylar Jackson's in Omaha, Nebraska. Barbara Stanford. Um, hey there, Laquana Brewington. All of y'all, come in here and click like and share, okay? After you've shared it, I'll, if I can see your name, I'll call you out. All right. Let me tell you this, girls. Feminine power is the most powerful power that there is. It really is. Why do you think they call it Mother Earth? Why do you think that? Honey, feminine power is the kind of power that creates. Feminine power is soft. Feminine, po feminine power literally is, is, is nurturing mas masculine energy it doesn't operate it can't operate without feminine energy and yet in you and sudden yet until some of y'all chasing these men that goes against the very laws of nature it goes against the very laws of nature for you to be have for you to hold, have all this feminine power and you shouldn't have been chasing a man but i'm gonna say we're gonna stop that today honey so I'm going to teach you today how to use your feminine power the way that i use my feminine power now i'm going to tell you right now there's going to be some lowbrow girls on here and possibly the kind of girls, when I talk about girls, I'm not just talking about females. I'm talking about men, too. Where they say, you a man. What you know about femininity? How a man going to teach me about being a woman? That's how I picture they talk when they say ignorant ass shit like that. All right? Darling, 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 darling. What those people don't understand is that feminine energy and masculine energy have nothing to do with gender or genitals. It has everything to do with the essence of your being. There's a little test that I give people to help them figure out if they are operating more from masculine or feminine energy. I'll do it with you all right now. All right. And excuse the noise in the background. When people are leaving the beach over here, they drive up this little road here. So you'll hear them leave driving up here. All right. Thank you, Starlin Nixon, for giving me stars. All right. Who shared this video? Thank you. Oh, Jayla Fluker shared it. All right, so answer me this question, all right? In a relationship with your spouse, even if you ain't got a spouse when you're in a relationship, if you had to pick one of the two, would you rather be respected by your partner or cherished by your partner? Comment below. Respected or cherished? If you say respected, then you are operating more from masculine energy, and there's nothing wrong with that. Masculine energy is very powerful, and there are many women um, who operate from, from a masculine energy source. That's fine. If you say cherish, you're operating more from, fem from feminine energy. Here's my thing. I'm not here to tell you that you should let go of your natural energy source. Some people write to me and say, MJ, I have more masculine energy. I, I, I want to have more feminine energy. How do I do it? Baby, you need to own the fact you've got more masculine energy, and that's fine. I'm just teaching you about feminine energy so that you can understand how to leverage it when you want to leverage it. Not to tell you that anything is insufficient about where you are currently operating from. All right. April Coppin says cherish. That's me. I'm cherished. Cherish is feminine energy. For me, I feel like if I'm being cherished, respect comes with it anyway. But you could be respected and not be cherished. You see where I'm going with that? I need my man to know that I am his trophy. I need him to know that I am that I am his prize. I need him to know that his life is made better because I am here. I need him to protect, okay, to the best of his ability provided. I'm not just talking about financially. I'm talking about providing in terms of, of love and providing in terms of just having my back, okay? That's what I need from my man, okay? And from that perspective, I 
am more attracted to men who have very pronounced masculine energy. Men who want to protect, men who want to provide, men who want to have your back and hold it down for you. That's what I'm attracted to. You know, so generally speaking for me, I tend to get turned off by men who are overly emotional. I tend to get turned off by men who are, um, who act as if they want me to chase them. Because when a man wants you to chase him, he's operating from a very feminine place. And for me personally, I'm just not attracted to that. I'm like, honey, if I wanted other feminine energy, I would find someone like that. I'm looking for a man. Not that. Okay. But you play into taking on a more masculine role when you chase a man. Mm hmm. That's what you do. Because here's the thing. Masculine energy wants to chase you. Masculine energy wants to pursue you. Masculine energy wants the girl or the guy that he will feel lucky to have. And how can he feel lucky to have you if you chasing him from day one? He doesn't feel lucky. He feels entitled. And there's a big damn difference. No man should ever feel entitled to you. He should feel lucky to have you. He should feel blessed to have you. He won't feel that if you're chasing him. You see where I'm going with that? Um, okay, Cynthia um, Chambliss says, I'm attracted to more masculine men, however we clash. Well, you have to look at that. You're attracted to masculine men, yes. But clearly y'all are clashing because... Maybe you're bringing some masculine energy into the picture in, in spaces that makes him feel threatened or vice versa. So you have a choice. Either you change who you're going after to go after men who have not a soft energy in terms of feminine, that they come across as outwardly feminine, but men who will let you take more of the lead. Either you go after that or you have to learn, which I'm going to teach you right now, how to deal with a masculine man that keeps you in power yet allows him to still feel like a man. You see where I'm going with that? And I teach you the girls this all the time, but I'm going to teach it again because I can't, I can't hammer it in enough. All right. All right. Someone said, drop the mic. Y'all are ready. Okay. Ready, set, go. Have y'all clicked share? All right. So he has to feel like a king. He has to feel like a king. He has to feel like a king. You have to let go of your image of what a man is and what a man is. You have to let go of all that jaded stuff that you have in your head about why that tells you that you should not make a man feel like a king. I'm not going to make him feel like this unless he do this. I'm not going to do this unless he do that. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to. Where's that from? Is it because the man who raised you didn't act much like a man so you learned not to trust men? Is it because the first man that you loved or the second man that you loved treated you poorly when you tried to make him feel like a king? And therefore, you, you, therefore in your mind now, you believe that in order to make a man feel like a king, he's got to jump through 85 hoops? No, nah, baby. Dare I say it, your daddy wasn't operating like a king. Okay? That's why he treated you and, and your mom and everybody else like shit. He wasn't a king. He was a broken little boy. That ex-husband, that, that, that last boyfriend of yours who hurt you, he wasn't a king, baby. He was a broken little boy. So what we have to do is, first of all, understand that it is okay to treat a good man like a king simply because he's a good man, simply because he's in our presence. He should not have to jump through any hoops for us to treat him like a king, just, just like he, you should have to jump through hoops for him to treat you like the queen that you are. No. I believe that you need, when you recognize you're in the presence of a good man, you need to let him know from day one, I, I, I respect who you are. I see who you are. And I'm going to treat you in a way that's reflective of that. Because you want that from him, don't you? All right? How you come out the gate says a lot and it means a lot. Okay? These first impressions matter. Y'all calling yourselves playing hard to get, which I think is cute sometimes. But really what y'all not playing is hard to get. What y'all playing is never going to get. Because you ain't going to never get a man with the shit you doing. The minute he come up to you. Ha <laughs> ha. He can't even say hello to you without an attitude. Y'all think that attitude shit is cute. Cut that shit, honey. When you're in the presence of a king, do you have an attitude? Hell no. You speak to him as if you're speaking to a king. And he will speak to you as if you're a queen. How do we do that? Well, let me tell you how I do it, honey. Because if anything, I know how to do, baby. I know how to do two things very well. I know how to seduce a man very well. I'm very good at it. And I know how to make a man feel like a king. Okay? 
I'm so damn good at it that throughout the years, I sometimes made men feel like kings who weren't kings, who didn't deserve to feel like a king. How you make a man feel like a king from the moment you meet him is first of all, when you first meet him, you turn that charm up to a thousand percent. <laughs> Hi, nice to meet you. Your voice should never be louder than his. You should never talk more than him. Don't say, oh, MJ, that's so old school. It's old school because it works. Okay. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Compliment them. Compliment them. Compliment them. What is that cologne that you're... What is that cologne that you're wearing? You smell amazing. What is that that you're wearing? Mmm, that smells so good. Malika Acosta, I'm going to come to your question in a moment. Mmm, that smells so good. Boost his fucking ego. Honey, let me say this. These men know you boosting their ego. They're not stupid. Okay? But they still like it. I will boost his ego, honey. So you do what within your job? Wow, that takes a lot of responsibility. Mmm, tell me more about that. How did you get so far so early in your career? You're so young. Boost his ego. Let me say this. The girls who are going to try to take your man from you, she'll boost his ego. She'll make him feel good. She'll make him feel like a king. So how are you going to get him and keep him if you don't do it and do it better? Honey, you need to treat him so good and make him feel so good that when he go in that streets, he can't no other bitch compete. All right. That's not to say that he still won't be a dog, baby. But what I will say is this much. At least he won't be dogging in the street because of something he didn't get from you. Um, Malika Acosta said, what I date, what do I think about dating outside your race? Date whatever motherfucking race you want to date, honey. I say this loud and loud and proud, baby. OK, I'm going to be married to and in a relationship with any man who treats me good, who treats me, who treats me like the queen that I am. All right. I'm going to I'm going to be married to the man who acts as, as if the king that I know he is. All right. So I'm wanting y'all right now. All right. Will y'all see me on camera? If y'all see me on camera and I'm like, hey, y'all, this is Pete. OK. Any hating bitches get off my feet that day. OK, girl, because you know I'm going to go in on you that day. OK, I'm going to drag you. And I say this is Juan. Juan. OK, girls. Shut the fuck up and say hi, Juan. Okay? You hear where I'm going with that? I'm going to be with whoever the fuck I want to be. And I could come on here and say, this is Markel. Okay? Shit. Some of y'all are talking about, I'm tired of being single. I'm tired of being single. I do everything right. I do everything right. Yeah, you do everything right, but you won't look at a man unless he, unless he black. You won't look at a man unless he's from your, your same ethnic, ethnic group. Girl, a good man can come in in many shapes and sizes and colors. And as for me, honey, I'm here looking for a good man. I'm here open to a good man. And he don't have to be a black man. Oh, my God. Thank you, someone. Todd Jones says, you're so pretty. I love your eyes and teeth. Thank you, baby. Thank you, baby. Thank you, baby. That's right, Laquana Brewington. Love don't have a race. All right, honey. Let me tell you this, girls, in my neighborhood over here, it's some of us over here, some black folks over here, not a lot, though, but it's some of us over here. But, babe, when I walk down the street, even when I walk in the dogs, honey, I wear my good, my good, nice, tight leggings all the time. I'm going to wear some cute little shorts. I wear a nice little top that shows off my titties and my arms. You see what I'm saying? That's what I do. I walk around and I struts. I struts, honey, when I see a cute one walking up the block. Walking towards me, I strut even hard because that's what feminine energy does. Feminine energy recognizes that a man buys with his eyes before he buys with his ears. All right, he don't care about what's between your what, what's between your ears. He don't care about what, what's in your head unless he like looking at you first. So I'm gonna make sure I give him something to look at first. Y'all say MJ, MJ, MJ. Come on, men can't be that superficial. Y'all are. We all are. Let's be real. If they don't if they don't look the part, we're not talking to them. It take a real special man or a special woman to get your attention when they don't look like half or nothing. All right. So I go for the lowest common denominator to make sure I can get all the eyeballs. Because if I can get all the eyeballs, then that gives me more people to work with. Okay. I'm going to be cute as a motherfucker. Okay. 
Told y'all about when I was walking the street, the man drove around. I told y'all all about that. We ain't going into that one just yet. Okay? And I had these men staring. Honey, walking by them. They wives got to hit their arm. Hit their arm. Turn around. Honey, he can look. Just make sure he doesn't touch. You see what I'm saying? Hold on, y'all. The fire truck about to go by. Hold on right quick. Hold on. I got to let him go by. I'm being nosy. What's going on? Child. Life at the beach. Life at the beach, honey. I don't know what's going on. You know, I'm going to tell you another thing about feminine energy, okay? Learn how to get these men together when they need to be gotten together without emasculating them. Okay? That's how you use your feminine power. A man say some dumb shit out of his motherfucking neck because they know how to do that shit. Thinking they're being cute, but yet they're being offensive. You get them together. Darling, can I tell you how I experienced what you just said? When you said so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so, I kind of heard it like this, which kind of made me feel da-da-da. Was that what your intention was? I don't snap. I don't have a reason to snap on a man. Why? Because I operate in my feminine power. Honey, I'm the prize. I'm the trophy. Why would I dare lose my cool and my calm? Andrea Crowder says, what's the first three things that stand out to you on a man? Hmm. His muscle tone. I don't need him to be muscular, muscular, but like, how does he fill out whatever he's wearing? Because like I said, we see first. So how is his muscle tone? The quality of his clothing. I'm not a superficial person. I got plenty of money on my own. I don't need a man's money, although I love when they spend it on me. Um, I think I love when they spend it on me because I know that I don't need them to. So it stands out that much more. When they even, I don't care if they don't do nothing, but just buy me a little bit of something. Just make an attempt. Get my attention. Um, but yeah, the quality of the clothes, I judge a man by his shoes. I ju- Unless you're working in the yard, baby, I need you to have on something nice. You don't got to be wearing Gucci Prada and all the other stuff, but just something nice is clean. Um, and it's grooming. I don't shit up under your nails. Uh-uh. No, uh-uh. Your breath. Your grooming. I, I got to look at your overall grooming. You can't have no motherfucking dragon breath. And, and hooves on your hands like you ain't getting no manicures and toe up feet. Oh, I can't say no toe up feet. It's so it's so easy. Thirty dollars get you a pedicure. Why don't you have one? You got the you got a you got an edge up and a haircut from the gods that your feet look like you've been look like you've been walking through through hot coals. Mm mm. That's what I first noticed. What y'all notice on the man first? Comment below. I'm curious. All right. That's some, like I said before. You got to learn how to correct the man. Without emasculating that man, okay? Let's see here. I love this. Blake Ballard says, that's right. When you own who you are, you can command a man's attention without even trying. Baby, let me tell you something. Let me tell you a thing or two. You're right, Blake. All right? Because as for me, honey, when I, come, when I come in a room, I know how to command a man's attention. I am very, very, very good at it, okay? You stand confidently. You stand tall. And you smile. You show your teeth at all times. Some people say, I don't like my mouth. Then show your titties. You know, cleave with something, honey. Some people say, it ain't about the way you look. Girl, where the fuck you heard that from? Where you hear that from? Honey, you got to get his attention first. Men are very superficial when it comes to these things. Get their attention first. I'm all about it. I'm pedicured and manicured, head to toe. Right? Jayla Fluka says she notices their teeth. Absolutely. All right. Sakarian Hayden says his smile, his smell, his appearance overall. I love that. Nancy um, Valma says, I can't stop laughing. Thanks for making my day. Love you, baby. All right. Yeah. Um, You got to look good, honey. Wear something tight every now and then. Girls, you can do that. Honey, a sundress will take you a long way. You wear a sundress. Put some spanks on, girl. She, let me tell you this. These men be the step the cons too. They be pulling stuff up, wearing tight tank tops to hold they to, to hold their chest in. Everybody got a little something extra once they get the clothes off, honey. That's fine. Shoot, that's all right. We all are, we all are human. Don't nobody look like they look all the time, you know. But that don't mean you can't pull it together. You better invest in some spanks. 
You know what I'm saying? Get your teeth whitened. Get, they got the little kit, kits at the store. Get some good scents to wear. You know what I would do when you buying a scent? See, some of y'all do it the wrong way. Y'all be going into these um, perfume stores and the counters and shit like that, asking a woman what you should buy. Why are you asking a woman what you should wear? Are you trying to attract a woman? If so, then ask a woman. But if you're trying to attract a man, what you do is when she comes up to you, hi, how can I help you? Find a man in there. Most of the time they're queens in there. I don't know too many straight men that work at the perfume counters. Not stereotyping. I'm just talking about from my own experience. Find a queen. Okay? Come over here. Come over here. Tyrone, come here. Come here. Hi. How you doing, young man? Okay. Let me ask you this. Which one of these scents do, do the, do the, um, which one of these scents over here do you think smells best? Just because he gay don't mean his, 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 I think his nose going to be best. Because he can say, this going to attract the man. This going to attract the man. You can tell me, I'm trying to attract the man. Which one should I wear? Oh, girl, wear this one. Honey, and you know me, honey, I wear perfumes and colognes. You didn't know you could wear colognes too? You didn't know you could do that? They have some really sweet smelling colognes out here too. You, you mix that with a little feminine scent, honey. You pull them in. He be like, something about you. Something about you smell good. Uh-huh. Phyllis White says, I get lots of compliments on my dresses. She says, I rarely wear pants, honey. Let me tell you this, honey. If I was a woman, you'd never catch me in no pants. Mm-mm. Not, not a day. Now, you can wear them sometimes, but not when I need to be out someplace where I'm looking for a man. Uh-huh. Joshua Williford, see, he just validated what I said. He says, he says, I look at a female's hand and feet. That tells me everything. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Uh-uh, Nisi, uh, Nisi said, I'm not wearing no Spanx with my sundress. I was just suggesting doing that if you, if you feel uncomfortable with your shape. You know, but not just saying under the sundress. I'm saying you, you pull it in, honey. I got my damn Spanx in the room and shit like that, honey. You know, back in the day before I started working out more, I had a little bit of a tummy on me, honey. Ain't nothing like a skinny man with a tummy. And that's all right, you know, but still, I get up on stage and I got tired of holding my stomach in the whole time. So I got some Spanx. I was hoisted high and dry, honey. I don't give a damn. Let me say this, okay? I never worried about it because they say, what happens when you take your clothes off? What's the man going to think? Honey, by the time I take my clothes off, I got plenty of other assets that will get his attention. I was not worried about him, about him not liking my, um, my, what do you call it? My, um, me having a little tummy, honey. Please, the kind of men that I like ain't worried about my tummy, honey. They worried about what's in the back. You see what I'm saying, honey? You throw this thing on them good enough, they ain't worried about nothing. You see where I'm going with that? I ain't worried about it. Okay. Okay, let me see here. Let me see here. Okay, I'm reading a comment. Um, Carla Schultz says, she says, I worked at a grocery store. A gay guy came in um, that I waited on. I asked him what cologne he had on. Um, I told him that he was the best smelling man ever and I could follow him through the store. He, he, <laughs> she said, he left really quick. Oh my God, you scared him off. But no, you're right, honey. Trust me on that, honey. People have different strengths. People have different strengths. Let me tell you how I work it. When it comes to things about my business, like my logos, my everything, what I wear, everything like that, I go to women for their, for their opinion. I mostly ask women for their opinion. Whether it's my sister, my mom, different friends of mine, like Dr. Angela, I would say, which do you like more, this or that? I ask Natasha, what do you like, this or that? Why? Because my audience is women, prim- overwhelmingly. Not that I, don't, that I also don't attract men. I always jokingly say, I got the Oprah audience, you know, from, you know, from years ago, where my audience is overwhelmingly women, but the smart men follow me, all right, um, as well. And so I, so I see you towards that. But when I'm trying to attract a man... I go to a man, I say, what scent do you like? This one or this one? Okay. If I'm wearing something to a party and, and it's going to be men there, which outfit do you like? This one or this one? I go to men about it. All right. Yes. Uh-huh. Felicia Ellison says, you are hilarious. I love to hear you share the rare truth. It's rare because people don't want to tell y'all this. People want to people be so PC, politically correct, that they don't want to tell you that 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 men are attracted to the way you look before he's attracted to to how big your brain is catch his eyeballs then you impress him with all that other stuff okay people don't want to tell you that a man is turned off by when you make him feel small and you say well he shouldn't feel he should he should know how to feel strong in his own and he blah, 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 blah. no girl no girl no girl he's insecure when he meets you he doesn't want to be rejected either 
He sees you with all your degrees. He sees you with all your education. He sees you with all the things you can bring to the table. And he's intimidated by that. Not that he feels smaller than you, but he doesn't know if you believe that he's good enough for you. So in the beginning, before while y'all are establishing a rapport, you do need to make sure that you, that you don't do things that, that emasculate him and makes him feel small. When he's talking, don't cut him off. Don't over talk him all the time. Running your mouth, running your mouth. Some of y'all mother mouth ba- Maybell at dinner. Just because he's nodding and smiling don't mean that he want to hear everything you got to say going on and on and on forever. Ask him some fucking questions. People, these men like to talk about themselves because don't nobody let them talk about themselves. Okay? Create some balance in the conversation. You see what I'm saying? That's how you make him feel good. Now, don't minimize, don't minimize your accomplishments, but also you don't have to tell him everything. You know what I do when a man asks me what I do for a living? Um, I answer, I'm just telling the truth. I say, I'm an entrepreneur. What am I supposed to say? I have five companies. What am I supposed to say? I'm one of America's largest African-American owned financial services companies. What am I supposed to say? That I, that I, you know, do videos that are distributed and seen by over 20 million people a month across, um, across um, digital platforms? No, darling. That's going to intimidate his socks off. Mm. So what I say is I'm an entrepreneur. He says, wow, what, do, what, what industries? Oh, entertainment and finance. Yeah, well, what do you do? Tell me about that. You're an engineer. Wow. Now, I've heard that engineering is only for the smartest guys. Is that true? Because I feel like this. I feel like everybody I know who's an engineer is always super smart, super good in math, is that true? You just being humble. <laughs> You're probably really smart. You see what I did there? Now, eventually, we get into talking about what I do for a living. When he pulls up at this house, he'll be like, you live here? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Put my imaginary bang behind my ear. Yeah, I do. And he's like, oh, wow. What did you say you did? I'm an entrepreneur. But by this time, we done been on a couple dates. You see what I'm saying? By this time, we done built a rapport. So by this time, when he sees all this, he can be like, he's like, oh, okay, this is icing on the cake. You see what I'm saying? Genevieve Bordeaux, Bordeaux, I'm sorry, says, I prefer to be overdressed and underdressed. Me too, darling. I always think I'm going to look good. I would rather a man say, damn, you look good than, oh, I didn't realize we were dressing down. Can you imagine going on a date? Can you, oh, child. Oh, I know somebody's wrote in here about somebody sending you a friend request with my picture on it. Y'all, I'm going to say this one last time. And I love you too, Shelly Johnson. I don't send friend requests and I don't DM you. I don't. These are people who are scamming. You report them to Facebook and block their profile. All right? That's all you can do, baby. That's all you can do. All right? Yes, imaginary bang Rosalyn Moore. That's what I do. Okay, I'm not, I'm not ashamed of nothing. I'm not ashamed of a motherfucking thing. Lynn Lazo says I should write a book. Y'all been saying that also. I also I'm, I'm getting there, y'all. I'm not ashamed of nothing, but I also know that a man can be a good man in every part of himself. But he has insecurities just like you got insecurities. And it's up to you to use your feminine power to lure him in and make him feel comfortable. Not to intimidate him with force. Some of y'all be barking, 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 barking. And wonder why you can't attract no man. All right. Thank you so much, Brandon Faison. He says he loves my shirt. Thank you, darling. Let's see. I'm looking at your questions here. Somebody says I'm really good at the way I respond to men. Oh, um, Ernestine McNeil Singletary says you are really good at the way you respond to men. I know how to respond to men because I am one and I, and I date them. I say I'm the best of both worlds. When people try to say, I've heard people right in here try to get cute with me and say, how can a man teach a woman how to, how to, how to, how to be a woman or, not, or how can a man teach a woman how to, how to, how to be more feminine or how to attract a man or whatever? Well, first of all, I can't teach you how to be a woman. I can't teach you how to be a woman. I can't teach you that because there's no one way to be a woman, just like there's no one way to be a man. All right. So I can't teach that. No one can teach you that. Not even a woman can teach you that. All right. But what I can tell you how to do is how to talk to men. All right. And I learned, learned very early on how to deal with men. When I was a kid, I had to learn how to deal with men because I was getting bullied. And I learned, okay, I can't fight back with force. I don't have the force to fight back, all right, because I'm smaller than them. But I can make sure that I can get back, that I can protect myself. And the way I learned to protect myself was with charm. 
I learned to do that, okay? I learned very early on, always be very friendly and non-threatening. If I'm friendly and non-threatening to men, they tend not to worry about me too much. They don't worry about me. And they like me a whole lot and they want to protect me. Some of the worst bullies in school, some of the worst bullies in school who used to beat the living hell out of some of my gay friends. It was terrible how they used to treat them. Those bullies in some cases were very protective of me. They say little things which was ignorant as hell, but they would still say it. They would say, you not like, you, you not like those other gay dudes. Why am I not like those other gay dudes, Curtis? I don't know, because you cool. You real cool. You real cool. I got your back. Don't worry about nothing. I was non-threatening to him. I made him feel good. All right? I always did that. I always knew how to make a man feel good. All right? When I got into the business world, shit. That was easy. Honey, growing up with my dad and my brothers, they are the epitome of masculinity. Okay? And I know how to get all of them together. Easy. Okay? Easy. All right? And they sweet people, but I know how to deal with their mass energy because they were louder than me and bigger than me. So was I supposed to be yelling, cussing, fussing in their face a fight? No, I couldn't do that. I was too small. So I learned how to talk to them. You know? One of the tricks I learned is when a man yelling, 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 fussing about something, you talk very low. You talk so low that it forces him to lower his tone. You see what I'm doing? And that's what you do. You don't raise your voice back to him. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, Curtis, I understand you. I understand exactly what you're saying, Curtis. Mm -hmm. Yes. I see how you could feel that way. Mm -hmm. And what I, what I do is I keep on burping and I have these old caramel candies inside. I'm talking low and I'm affirming him. I'm not resisting him. Because masculine energy wants to be heard and validated. And they, and, when, and they don't feel like they're being hurt when you're resisting so much. And so I know I'm going to get him to listen to everything I got to say once I get him to calm down. All right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yes, Curtis, I definitely understand what you're saying. I see how you could feel that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. Is there anything that you feel that I need to hear from you that you don't think I'm taking in? Or maybe there's something that I'm not getting? Okay. All right. And I talk low because I force him to lower his voice. Tell him, stop yelling at me. He's going to yell louder. I bring him down. Then they have to talk to me in this lower tone. And then once I get them nice and calm, really calm, then I walk up to them and I put my hand on their back and I rub their back. Rub their back. Rub that man's back. Rub that man's back. Okay? Rub his back. Now, baby, I know that you're very upset. I'm, I'm worried as well. I'm hurt as well. You're not mad. You're worried. You're hurt. You're sad. I'm sad as well. But I love you and I want to work through this. Baby, how do you think we can start to work through this? How can we start to work through this? Rubbing his back. Rub his thigh if you really want to make him happy. Okay? What I've learned is that getting what I want is more important than winning an argument. Fuck winning an argument. You can win an argument and never get nothing out your man. Girl, I want what I want. And I want him to get what he wants too. It's a win-win, honey. Y'all going to bed tonight. I won that argument. No, what you did was emasculated him. What you did was build his guard up even further so he'll shut down even faster and harder next time. Y'all saying, my man don't talk to me. My man don't talk to me. Okay, he doesn't talk to you now. But back in the day when he tried to talk, how were you responding to him? Now, some men are the way they are. But I'm going to tell you this right now. Some of y'all may help make him into what he is right now. You apply too much masculine energy when dealing with him and it shut him down. Let me read this. Um, Chona Underwood says, I don't curse and have found that that amazes men. But I can still get you together. Yes, girl. You get them together however you need to. Now, here's the thing. Y'all hear me on cussing. I don't think camera. I curse. I do all this stuff on camera. But I'm normally doing it in the, in the name of comedy and joking and shit like that. You know. But when I'm with a man, uh-uh. Unless we joking and laughing, I'm not going to curse. Especially not in an argument. I'm not going to curse at him. I do not curse at him. I do not curse at him. Uh-uh. That's right. Laquana says, the power of touch. You'll be surprised how a person melts to a soft touch. Yes. Y'all think y'all doing some shit. When y'all hold him back, I'm mad at him, so I'm not going to touch him or let him touch me. But that's not the dumbest shit I ever fucking heard. If you mad at him, let him touch you. 
and touch on him too. Because what you're going to do is you're going to break down that wall he got. You're going to soften his spirit. And when you soften his spirit and break that wall down, that's going to open his ears so he can then hear you and hear your perspective. And then you're going to get him to do whatever you want him to do anyway. If you want him to do what you want him to do, you don't get that with resistance. You win more men with honey than you do with vinegar, honey. Get that honey. Honey, make them feel good, honey. I done gave some of my best sessions and y'all know what I'm talking about. When I was mad at him, honey, that's when I, that's when I throws it on him the right way. Honey, I'm going to knock his socks off so that by the time we're done and he laying there <gasps> panting for air. Baby, I'm just curious. Yeah, baby. Do you think that maybe a little later on tonight we can talk a little bit more about, about that issue that we were disagreeing about yesterday? Because I, I really care about you and I know you care about me and I, and I love you and I just want us to have peace. Can we talk about it a little later on? Yeah, baby. Anything you want. Okay, baby. Give me a kiss. You see what I'm doing, honey? Release all that good serotonin in them. All right? T um, let me see. Miss Diaz says here, Tanny Lee says, how do you deal with a man who's a narcissist? Baby, I don't. Narcissist, um, what is it? Uh, borderline personality disorder, sociopath. Those are all three different personality disorders that you can't do anything about. They are who they are. They are who they are. That's right, Nolan. Power of the P. Make a man feel good. Disarm him. Exactly. We got to teach these girls. We got to teach them. And I'm talking to the 70-year-old girls too, honey. Honey, we all girls at the end of the day. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Mm-hmm. Let me see here. Yes. Timothy Jones Jr., he, he said this right here. He says, you'd be surprised, you'd be amazed at the power of, I'm trying to go up to it. You'd be amazed at the power of a feminine low tone, how that has on a man who barks like a dog. Oh, it gets them to calm down, honey. They calm so, they calm down so much. I do it in business. Oh, they, <laughs> who was I talking to the other day? Oh, I was on the phone about a business issue, right? And this is somebody outside of my company and the man just was over talking, <laughs> talking so loud. I stayed quiet the entire time. And, he, and every time I tried to talk, he cut me off. So finally, when I spoke, he tried to cut me off again. And let's say his name was, um, I don't know, um, Matt. I don't know, making up a name. I said, Matt, I said, can I ask you a question? He said, sure. I said, um, I said, how would you like this conversation to go moving forward? What do you mean? I said, well, I'm having a really hard time feeling like I can be heard. And I don't want to over talk you because I know you've got very important things to say, but I'm not sure where the space is for me to also share my input because I would imagine that you need my input in order for us to figure out a path forward. So I just want to understand how would you like this conversation to happen? How would you want it to, to flow moving forward? I put it on him. That's one of the most powerful things you can do. Do not argue with him. Throw a question at him. Baby, I don't understand why you would say that to me. Why did you say that? What did you mean when you said that? And then be quiet. Raising his voice. I hear you, baby. But can I ask you a question? Why do you feel the need to yell when you say it to me? I'm not raising my voice. I'm not yelling. Okay, I understand. Maybe you don't hear this yelling. But let me ask you this. Do you think that I would also hear you if you spoke a little lower? Do you think I'd be able to receive that as well? He say something off the cuff to you. Baby, why would you feel the need to say that to me like that? All right. Now, um, Frida Arlene says that you got to be careful with this one, Frida. She says, I just ignore you until you calm down. Then I'll approach the situation again. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. What that is, and I'm not saying you, this is your intention, but how it can be received by the other person. That can be received as emotionally manipulative. Because essentially you're in an exchange with somebody and unless they just walked up to you and started yelling at you, nine times out of ten, both of y'all did something to contribute to the fact of why y'all are in a disagreement in some way, shape or form. Nothing happens in a vacuum. And even if you all both didn't, you're in a relationship with someone who, who you value, whoever that may be. So when you shut down and don't respond and don't talk to them until they calm down, what you're doing is you're disregarding their feelings that they have. 
the person yelling may not feel good to you or them raising their voice may not feel good to you that masculine energy man it may not feel good to you for him to be doing that but the reality is that he may have something valid to say it's just his delivery mode may not be your preferred delivery mode you cannot regulate the conversation what you can do is show up and participate in a way that reflects how you want him to talk to you so rather than shutting down and checking out which makes him feel like you're dismissing him, which will more than likely make him get even worse, all right? What you can do instead is you just be calm. As he's yelling, you sit down and you calm down, all right? Now, there are boundaries to this. If he's hitting you, if he's calling you names, cursing at you, of course, now that is the time to separate from the situation. But I'm just talking about him just raising his voice, right? Just normal human things. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And blah, 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 blah. don't say nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Make sure that as you're listening to him, that your face communicates that you are listening to him. Okay? Because some of y'all say, you're going to be quiet. Y'all say like this. Being sarcastic through your eyes. And then wondering, why is he yelling? Or wonder why is he checking out? Y'all drive some men away doing that shit. You think you're making a point, but when you're not making a point, you're driving him away. Just because you have different emotional tools than he has, doesn't make your tools better. So then what you do is you come and you listen. Helping to feel heard. Mm-hmm. 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 No, I understand, baby. I understand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying I agree. I'm saying I understand. I understand. Mm-hmm. No, I see how you can see it that way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then once he stops talking, move closer to him. Just sit there for a minute. Sit close to him. You don't have to respond immediately. You don't have to respond immediately. You gotta respond immediately. You sit there for a minute. Rub his thigh, rub his back. Hug him. Baby, can I have a hug? Why we gotta hug? We're in the middle of talking. I just wanna hug because I love you. And we're gonna continue the conversation and I'm certainly gonna respond. But I just really am yearning to, I'm yearning to feel your touch right now. And I want you to feel mine right now. Can I hug you? And when you hug, you don't give one of those quick little hugs. Don't do one of those little side hugs where your titties ain't touching them. Do a full titty hug. Hug him. Hug him. Squeeze him tight. Let him bury his face in your neck so he can smell all of your pheromones. Take you in, honey. Let him take you in. And you don't let go until you feel his body start to loosen up. Until you feel that tension fall from him. And then once he loosens up, then you sit down. Sit down with him right beside you. And then you say to him, while you're still rubbing him, then you say, baby, what I heard you say was X, Y, Z, A, B, C. Did I get that right? Yeah, I think you got that right. Is there anything else that you feel like I'm missing from what you said? No, 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 no. Okay, baby. Let me share with you how I feel. Use feeling words. I feel hurt, the da, da, da. I feel sad, the da, da, da. I feel happy, the da, da, da. Emotion moves masculine energy, not arguments. All right? Janet Borden says, tell it like it is. Much love for, to, from Toronto, Canada. Ebony Queen says, best advice ever. Are y'all sharing this best advice ever? Are y'all sharing this best advice ever? That's why Erica Wilson, um, she's got a master's of education, honey. She's a smart girl, smart girl. She said, yes, that's right, a full city hug, honey. I believe in a full city hug, honey. Honey, I give the best hugs, okay? By the time I get done hugging, hugging that man, he forgot half the shit he was going to say to me. I get finished hugging him, and I'm, and I'm rubbing the back of his head as I'm hugging him. And when I pull away from my kiss him, I'm rubbing the back of that head, that big old head. And I say, baby, so um, was there anything else you wanted to say to me before I share with you what I feel? I don't even remember what I had to say. Are you sure, baby? Yeah, okay, well, baby. Well, let me tell you this. I'm just trying to tell you how to use your feminine power. Some of y'all overworking. Why are you working so hard? Some of I just cussed my man out and I had to get him together. Girl, you working so hard. When you use your feminine power, you don't have to cuss no man out. Oh, no. I don't raise my voice at a man. Why would I do that? I'm more likely to raise my voice at one of my female friends when we talk. And I'm like, nah, bitch, you need it. Da. And she's like, nah, bitch, you need it. Da, da, da. But we just playing. All right? I'm not raising my voice to no man. Because if I raise my voice at him, I'm teaching him that it's okay to raise his voice at me. And it's not. Kelly Wallace Phillips says, I just love you. I think you are so uplifting. I love you too, my dear. Are y'all going to text me? Y'all text me, okay? Y'all be asking me about my story times. Hold on, let me put my phone number in here. I love you. I don't know why that song's in my head. That's my phone number, y'all. Text me. 
Somebody, um, what's her name? April Coppin says, I need to write skits and plays. Oh, y'all think I could be a child of Prairie? <laughs> Text me, y'all. That's how y'all can get notified about my upcoming story times. Y'all been asking about it. I'm doing something real big. It's big. And I'm going to text y'all about it once it's together. Text me. Text me, girls. Okay? Text me, honey. That's how you do it. Let me see here. Yes, girl, I don't have the energy to be cussing nobody out. That's what Nia, um, um, Bam, what, I, her name skipped by me. Um, Bamson said. That's right, honey. Oh, yes, baby. Uh, this is what Timothy Jones Jr. said. He says, by the time I finish hugging a man, he thinks he's, mo <laughs> he says he thinks he's motivated me, baby. You, that's what I'm saying. You better use all the meat, baby. Use all the meat, honey. Squeeze them up, baby, okay? Some of y'all girls, I'm like, I feel like I need to lose weight. Why? Why would you do that, honey? Don't, don't never believe him. Don't never believe nobody when they tell you this, okay? when they tell you otherwise, okay? A man like hugging you, you got more meat on your bones. Honey, the way, the way these men like touching on me now compared to back when I was as skinny as a toothpick. Honey, I used to be skinny, skinny. They like something to grab on to. I'm envious of some of my best friends out here that I be seeing y'all. Y'all got curves and stuff. I want more curves, honey. Y'all couldn't tell me nothing if I had more curves. Couldn't tell me nothing. Y'all couldn't. Hold on real fast. Y'all text me right now. Y'all know how I do when you text me, right? When you text me and you text me your picture... I show y'all on camera sometimes. So go ahead and text me right now so I can pull y'all up on camera real fast. I'm going to pull you up on the camera. All right. Nicole Hunt says, I didn't get a text today. But that's because I didn't text today, baby. I don't want to be texting people every day, all day. I said, you know, that's the worst when you, get somebody, when you get somebody your phone number and they just text your phone off the hook. So I said, I want to respect y'all and not be texting you 24-7. I try to text you when something's important, you know. Sometimes I do happy birthday text messages. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Oh, thank you. Somebody said, who said that? Amy Bedford says, um, she says, I love you. You're such a, um, um, a beautiful person. Thank you, baby. Hold on. I'm going to take my earpiece off. All right. Can y'all still hear me? Can y'all hear me? Is this on? Is this thing recording? I love when, when Madison says that. Hold on, let's see here. T.S. Madison. I'm, I'm going into my text screen so I can see y'all. Ooh, Lord. Somebody said hugging a skinny man could break a bone. Shut up, girl. You know, I, I'm skinny-ish some days, depending on how I'm handling my... Depending on how I'm eating. <laughs> she ain't gonna break a bone. Let me pull up my thing here. I'm gonna pull it up. I need y'all to text me. That's what I'm gonna do. Do I ever answer text messages on a personal level? Sometimes I do. Sometimes I do. It depends. Well, first of all, let me send my happy birthday text. Happy birthday, best friend. This is someone's birthday, so I'm sending her a birthday text right now. It re my text system reminds me when y'all have birthdays. So if I'm logged in that day, I can see it. Okay, let's see here. All right, let's see here. For the people who just got on my text, I'm gonna say, save my number. Okay. Let's see here. Y'all text me pictures? I want to see y'all's pictures. What are y'all doing? Okay. Um, Jamia Hughes. She texted me something. Let me show y'all this. Jamia Hughes said that's her and her grandbaby. Look at them. Look at them. Just a beautiful photo. Jayla Fluker right there. Look at her. That's who we was talking to earlier. Remember I called her name out earlier. There goes Thomas Dawson. Look at that hair. Look at that handsome smile. He said he liked my story times and he wants to be a part of my team. You want to be a part of my team, Thomas? What I want you to do right now is www.joinnational, y'all. Hold on. I'm trying to type the link to him. Care.com. That's how you join my team, Thomas, right there. I sent him the link real fast. See, I can respond. Look at Tara. Tara Durham. There goes Sharon Ida Punchard. Cynthia Tovar, look at her. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. There go Rudy Stewart. There go Sylvia Thomas. There go Renee Young. I love it, I love it. She's helping, she's helping keep us alive by wearing masks. Let me tell you, wearing a mask is, 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 a, is an act that, that protects other people. It's not just about you. 
All right, look at La LaVon James. Love her, beautiful. I love her hair, love everything about her. Look at those beautiful eyes, look at that beautiful face. Let me see here. I'm going through the messages right now. Let me see. I'm trying to see who else texting me. I'm responding right now. Y'all playing around. Text me. Chat. Look at Jaina. Look at Jaina. Honey, honey, honey. Look at those beautiful eyes. Look at this child. She doing it. She doing it. Oh my Lord. Look at Eileen Toombs. Look at her. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now this one just sent me their cash app. I ain't asked for your cash app. I asked you for a photo. Carmen Johnson with that beautiful hat on. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Let's see here. Sonia Covington. Look at her. Look at her. Antoinette Shade. I love it. I love it. Deneen. Oh, I love her. Her name is Doreen Duronslit. I always try my best to pronounce your names. I always want to try my best. Even if I get it wrong, I'm going to try. Okay. Kiki Alexander. That's not like a superstar's name. My name is Kiki Alexander. I love that. I love that. Y'all keep on texting me. Um, let me see. Angelia Baker. I love it, y'all. All right, y'all keep on texting me, all right? So y'all can be notified about my future story times. But like I said, do not forget your feminine power, girls. Okay, honey? It is there for a reason. Use it liberally, baby. Uh, I say, honey, lav it up, honey. Because the better you use it, the more you'll get out of life. I love you too. Bye-bye, y'all. I'll be back on one. Bye-bye.